Hello. Thank you, Sumana, for giving me the toughest act to follow. So I'm Morgan, and I'm going to talk about my game. So a little background, I grew up playing a lot of video games, like especially very text-heavy ones, like Baldur's Gate. Any fans? Yeah. yeah, cool. And I love games so much that I wanted to be a game developer when I grew up. And then I learned that the game industry isn't great for women or anyone. So I just kind of let that ship sail, and I, I didn't want to fight that fight. But in college, I studied computer science, and in my first class, we made a text adventure game. No graphics, really simple, in the terminal. And it was so much fun. And it was the first time I had made a game, and I realized I can make games and not have to deal with the game industry, which is cool. Ta-da. And it's important to note that at this point, I still don't know the first thing about game design or like physics engines. I got a C in linear algebra. Like I'm not qualified, quote, to make games, but that's fine, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and I just hope that if there's someone in the audience, I know there's at least one, who is interested in making games but is intimidated or they think they don't have what it takes, you honestly do. If you have an idea, then that's kind of the whole battle, really. Um, so part of why I wanted to make a game was I used to be a programmer, I'm not anymore, and I wanted to maintain my coding skills without having to deal with other people looking at my code and their attitude. And I wanted to make something creative and technical. It's actually a lot of fun to make a game. And I wanted to see if it's at all possible to maybe make something more diverse. And for those of you who can see the slides, which they're all men looking very intensely at the camera, wearing black and red. It's uncanny how similar all these pictures are from different video games. And this wasn't hard to find. Like, if you just search video games, this is what you see. And I like some of these games, but like, damn, that's not what I look like. That's not what most of us look like, and that's not that fun. So when I was making the game, I was really inspired by sci-fi, um, especially older stuff like Blade Runner or 2001 A Space Odyssey. And I really like the past's idea of the future. I think 2001 A Space Odyssey is a great example because they thought we would have a lot done by 2001, and we didn't. <laughs> Um, but really, sci-fi is a great way of comparing our world now to what it could be or to what might go horribly wrong. And it can be used as a really powerful way of doing social critique and robots. Yeah. <laughs> and I was really, really inspired by this game, The Longest Journey. Um, have any of you played it? Okay, awesome. So for those of you who haven't, it's really based on, it's just about storytelling and the importance of stories, and it also has a really, really diverse cast. Probably comes as no surprise that this is a Norwegian game. Um, and the thing is, it's actually recently gotten a lot of flack for people for having a gay protagonist or having a lesbian couple that doesn't exist for the male gaze. And that's weird, because there's all these people saying, well, I, I don't see why that's relevant. Like, you're just pushing your agenda on me, it's a game, it's not important, it makes me uncomfortable. I disagree with that. I hope some of you do too. And I think it is important to see yourself in a game. And that's really empowering and awesome. And it's just a great game. Like, honestly, you guys should play it. So, my game. It's a browser-based game. Uh, it's only been tested in Chrome, so it's really a Chrome-based game. Sorry if you don't use Chrome. <laughs> and it's very, very simple. All you do is you read the text and then you select the option for what happens next. And one thing I wanted to do was to make the protagonist a woman and to have the player go through experiences that some women might typically go through that men don't. Like having to have a really awkward conversation with someone in the elevator. So for those of you Oops, who can't read what's on the side, it says, you get in the elevator of your apartment building, you hear someone yelling, hey, hold the elevator. You recognize that voice. And you can either sigh and push the open doors button, or you can frantically push the closed doors button. <laughs> which I think some of us have been there. 
And you know, you're just stuck in the elevator making really awkward small talk with a guy who doesn't understand that you really don't want to be making small talk with him. And I just want to show that because it's something women go through, but I don't want to make it any more extreme than that. For those of you who maybe watch Game of Thrones, you know that they've received a lot of criticism, rightfully so, for using violence and trauma against women to establish empathy. And you don't have to show the worst case scenario of someone's experience to prove that it's different. It can just be these kind of awkward situations that you find yourself in. There's no point in getting more violent than that. Another thing I really wanted to talk about is mental um, health. My mom works in special ed and a lot of her students are very heavily medicated to the point where I think it's more fair to say they're sedated. And while that can help some people sometimes, there's, there's a balance. You know, people still have to be able to live their lives. And I think, I don't know, in games, no, I've never seen one that actually talks about mental health. And if any of you know about one, like, please talk to me afterwards. But it's just not something you see. Or if you do, it's a sob story. And that's someone's only identity. But I wanted to show that people have anxiety. They have depression. They're not always 100%. And that's fine. You can have panic attacks. You can have no idea what you're doing. And you can still be heroic. You don't have to be the stereotypical, confident protagonist with huge muscles who has all the answers. But if you are, I mean, honestly, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I live in San Francisco. Um, and if you've ever been there, you'll notice that there's a lot of homeless people. It's kind of historically been the case. And it's becoming more and more jarring because there's more and more very wealthy people living in the same areas, and these groups do not interact at all. And I mean, I work in tech, and I know that when people in tech talk about homelessness, they're either very judgmental, they're like, oh, let's just get rid of all of them. And I'm like, okay, like that's not a solution. <laughs> um, or they get this savior complex, or like, we need to rescue every single one of them. And I was like, Maybe some of them don't need rescuing, they just need a place to sleep at night and for you to not just help them to feel good about yourself. And I really wanted in the game for people to have to interact with homeless people, with sex workers, with anyone who makes less than six figures a year, um, because in San Francisco that doesn't happen very much, unfortunately. And it's just becoming clearer and clearer how tech does exclude quite a few people. I remember when the Apple Watch came out and everyone was excited and I was like, who can actually afford the Apple Watch? Again, if you can, good for you. I mean, you're doing great in life. But I really wanted this game to force people who are playing it, most of which would be in San Francisco, to have to go through an interaction that they wouldn't go through that might make them uncomfortable, even if they don't fully understand why. Because I think if you can do that in a game and go through it and you're like, oh, well, that wasn't so bad, then maybe, hopefully, that translates into real life. And if in the game you could see that the homeless person yelling on the street actually has some intelligent things to say, you might give them a shot in reality. Or you might not, I don't know. This is just a hypothesis. The last thing I wanted to do was to show racial diversity, which turns out to be really hard in a text-based game, because I can't show you the characters. And I don't want to do the thing that some writers will do, where they're like, this is Susan. Susan's black. <laughs> because now that's all Susan is. Like, you just, she's just a token character. Now, that's not fair to Susan. And so it's like, how am I going to show racial diversity? And in fact, like, you can do this through language. You know, people speak other languages than English. They use those words. They have accents, slang. They might refer to where they're from. They might have really hard names to pronounce. Everyone mispronounces my name. And it actually kind of worked to my advantage that you can't see the characters. For example, the protagonist is a woman. And that's kind of about as much as I ever describe about her. I have an idea of what she looks like in my head, but that's just my idea of her. I mean, she could look like anyone you want. She could look like you, assuming you're cool with female pronouns. 
and having the name Mal. Her name is Mal. Um, and really what I discovered while making this game was that showing diversity is really, really easy in games and that gaming companies have no excuse to not do it. You don't have to go out of your way to have more than big buff white dudes in the game. And I think the trick is really to first write all your characters just as neutrally as possible. Like you're gonna have a scientist character and they're very dedicated to their work and they're very polite. That's kind of their personality. And maybe some of you, as soon as I said scientist, you might imagine white guy. And that's where you have to ask yourself, okay, does this character have to be a white guy? The answer might be yes, you know, use your like, best judgment. But I found it was helpful to write these characters, see how I imagine them, and then say, okay, could the character be a Native American woman? Yeah, why not, honestly? And it's better to do it in that direction than to go out and say, I'm gonna write a Native American female character, because then you're just gonna rely on stereotypes. That's suddenly their only identity. So I kind of wish people from like Blizzard or something were here, because I just dropped some knowledge on them, but now you all know how to do it. And the cool thing too, with sci-fi especially, is that you can use this world as a model, but you can change some of its history. You can assume some things never happened. You can assume that maybe some prejudice and bias doesn't exist in the alternate world. And you can start to create a more utopian world of like, okay, well let's assume things are different in this alternate universe. And I think if you have that in your head, if you can imagine a better reality, again, assuming this is like utopian sci-fi, then you can actually work towards that. And it's really empowering. And again, robots. So on that empowering note, if any of you want to make a browser-based game, it's really, really easy to do it. All you need to know is a tiny bit of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And if you already know those things, awesome. And if those words scare you, that's fine too, because there are some great resources like Code School, lynda.com, or Treehouse that are free or very cheap, and they can teach you how to start coding right away. Like you could start today after the talks. And so if you have an idea, just teach yourself the bare minimum of front end code, and you can start making a game, and you don't have to deal with the industry. Of course, you can also look through my source code. It's not beautiful, but I'm happy to have people poke around in there, ask me questions, whatever it may be. And of course, you can look at the game as well. It's futureperfectgame.herokuapp.com. There's only the first chapter up. It's very much a work in progress, and I'm actually terrified of showing it to people this early on, but you should get feedback early and often. And I would love it if some of you played it, let me know what you think on Twitter, email, whatever. And there's cats. So if you like cats, thank you so much. Thank you.